Previously on AI The Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative. We gotta take him down. You know what that means, right other me? Wait, what? Well, what are we gonna do? You know, you know the thing. Ah, I see. We're, We're gonna, gonna bash their skulls open, open with our metal pipes. And now I'm about to bash you people's skulls open with my metal pipe. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jurabi Therian bringing you another episode of AI The Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative. We last left off, we... Oh, God. We went through a lot of stuff. Like, it's gonna take a while to explain, but I hope you guys can stick with me. So, we went to the other route in Lian's Somnium world, and then we went to the cathedral to find the document that Tokiko was reading. But in the process, we found the right half of the fifth victim. And it was there that we find out the identity of this fifth victim. Uru Somizuki. Uh, well, this is a little bit complicated because there's a lot more to do it than that. Follow with me, guys. Follow with me. I hope I don't lose you. So Tokiko and Chikara had a child, and that child turned out to be Jin Furaway. It turns out that Jin Furaway had a tumor on the right side of his body that is going to kill him. So Tokiko agreed with Chikara to find a child that had the same genetic makeup as Jin Furaway. And eventually, they found Uru Somizuki at Eowyn Garden. They kidnapped Uru Somizuki, conducted experiments on him, and then eventually, they found a way to cut Uru in half. Then they cut both Jin Fuwe and Uru Somizuki in clean perfect half. Then they combined Uru Somizuki's right half with Jin Furaway's left half. This ultimately killed Uru Somizuki, at least I think. So that left us with Uru Somizuki's left half and Jin Furaway's right half. So the right half of Jin Furaway was kept underneath the cathedral, while the left half of Uru Somizuki was, went to the stadium. And now for the right half that we saw in Studio Divita, that was Jin Furaway's right half. That I suppose was like covered up with like some special material or something. I'm not entirely sure. At least I'm like, getting this right. I don't know. I feel like I've gotten lost at some point in the explanation. But that means that Terror is Jin Furaway, but not the Jin Furaway that we think he is. And that his body was cut in half, but placed together into a whole like weird fucked up body where one half is your face, and the other half is another person's face. Oh god. So then, where does this leave us? I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. There's one question that, you know, I've constantly bitched about all the time, every day, and it's the fact that we saw the left half of a body in Gen's freezer. That has to be Uru Somizuki's left half. In which case, I don't understand, like, what is going on there? Did... Did they find another person that, like, had the same face as, like, Jin Furaway and just, like, cut them in half and put his body, his left half, onto Uru Somizuki? I mean, I mean like, uh, Jin Furaway, I mean? I think that's what happened. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know how that, like, left half could have even appeared to begin with. And why did Terror put that left half onto the rooftop Mizuten? He wanted to present that body to the world, right? Like, why would he present that body... And then get mad when someone takes it. Like, I, I I don't know what Terror is thinking. I don't know. And it's not just that. Oh, God, this this is going to be a long story. I hope I'm not losing you guys. What happens next is that we went to Kizuna. We wrapped up, like, Leanne's relationship with Kizuna. They both live happy ever after. But not before the masked woman appeared. And we, like, had to fight, uh, you know, those guys that, like, Riche hired to attack us and all that. But then, the masked woman's mask comes off at last, and it turns out that she has the same face as the young Mizuki. Alright. Alright. I hate to say it, but like, I called that ship a mile away. I really did. Like, did you really think I was going to be, like, fooled by the masked woman and like, wonder, oh man, who? I wonder who, who this could be. Nah, nah, I pretty much had it figured when she opened her mouth. I heard Mizuki, I heard it, okay? You cannot fool me. But yeah, that masked woman turns out to be, to have the face of young Mizuki. My only like possible explanation as to how this is possible is that like, like Mizuki, 
This girl was genetically modified by Horidori Institute as well. She was born, but before her embryo turned into a baby, it was genetically modified, and that's how she ended up having this, like, colossal strength. Same with Mizuki. And Mizuki and the Masked Woman both have the same heart problems, so... I'm having a feeling that, like, the heart problem is, like, a side effect to the the genetic, like, modifications that they got. And I'm just, I'm just wondering, like, why is it that the heart problem is a problem now with Mizuki, when it was never a problem in the last game? Did it take a while for it to start happening? That's my only explanation to how this is possible. Then there's the fact that, like, there's so many questions. It's like, Date, I think I remember Date saying that you look so much alike, and it's like, Wait, did he know about the mask one as well? But then, like, wait, I'm just so- I'm- I'm kind of lost right now. Is it implying that the masked woman, that Mizuki, is the real one that was from the last game? Is that what the game's implying, or...? I think it is. But then what about the Mizuki we are? Is she a clone or something? Or, no, no, I, I can't say it's a clone because... I theorized that they were born in the same way through embryo genetic modification. So I don't think Mizuki is technically a clone, just a person who has the same face. But that girl is having the same appearance as the young Mizuki. That's that's kind of worrying me a little bit because that might mean that that masked woman is actually the real Mizuki, and the Mizuki we are now is someone different. But then that don't make no sense though because. If that's the case, how did no one else notice? I guess it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, I try my best to just deconstruct this whole story and try to make sure it all makes sense and try to make my theories off of it. But this is so, so exhausting. I just, I can't, I can't process it all. I just, I have to. I know, I, I just, I just, just stop. I should just stop and just get on with the story so that, like, I can just get all the answers that are going through my mind because I feel like we're approaching the very end of this game. We're in the final route, at least I hope, because I don't know. I just don't know. It could be anything, really. But yeah, we are approaching the final route, and we're approaching the end of this game. So that just means that this entire recording session is probably going to be my last introduction for this game. So I might as well get everything like wrapped up as of now. So, what I plan to do after I finish this game is that, like, I'm going to do a bonus, like, a uh, video where I, I go through all the Somnium worlds, go through all the funny moments, and, like, try to get all the eyeballs and complete everything. That's going to be my plan, because I don't think I'll be able to do it in this video, because I, I don't know when this story is going to end. So, better to just, like, do the extra content afterwards, then I can, like, end this, like, let's play. In that case, well, I don't know what the final Somnium is going to be about, to be honest. I, I'm having a feeling that, like... Since this person is, uh, Jin Furoe, that means, well, Uruso Mizuki is already dead, so I'm not sure who the final, like, Somnium World is going to be about. Is it going to be Ryuki again? Actually, now that I think about it, we don't know who killed the victims. Like, we don't know, actually. Like, ah, uh, god dang it. I feel like that's a red herring, though, because I know that it is Terror who is Jin Furoe. I know he was doing this. But Uro Somasuki was the one who came up with the idea of splitting the bodies in half, right? What if it's a case is like it's like the last game where like the victims all killed each other. So that like uh so Jin Furoe killed Uro Somazuki, and then Chikara killed Jin Furoe, I suppose? And then Tokiko killed like Chikara? And then somehow, some way, Komeji killed Tokiko? That would make no sense, but I don't know. I'm just wondering what uh, Amami's involvement in this, because he's still is an unknown factor. I just don't know. Then there's also the fact that, like, you know, Tokyo Somnia World. What about that? Like, we saw Gen in her Somnia World. How does she know him? They explained how she knows Shoma, but not Gen for some reason. I don't know. There's just so many questions in this, like, story that I'm just a little bit worried that they might have forgotten about it, to be honest. Same with the blue person in the cathedral that we saw as Ryuki. We still haven't answered that. Is it possible, just possible, that maybe Ryuki is the bad guy all along? Is that- is that the possibility? I just- I don't know, but I feel like we're gonna confront him in the cathedral. And I'm not sure what we're gonna do, or what he's planning to do, or what Terrace told him to do. I'm not entirely sure. And we still haven't seen, like, you know, Tama at all. Like, that's just- 
I don't know. I feel like that's kind of disappointing that, like, Tama only got one side of the flowchart and we barely saw her again. I understand that it was the same for Aiba, but I feel like they mentioned Aiba way more in, like, Ryuki's perspective than Tama in Mizuki's. And I'm still wondering, like, why is the flowchart so unbalanced here? It's like, we have Lian, here's his route, and then we branch off. But for Shoma's Somnium world on this side, it doesn't branch off. Neither does it go into the 15th of February. I have no fucking clue anymore. I just don't know. Oh well, we'll just have to figure all that out later. I'm just... Okay, guys. I'm gonna go for as long as it takes to finish this game. At least I hope this is gonna be the end of this game. I don't know. I feel like... Like, like she... <sighs> Actually, oh, hold on, hold on. I just remembered something. So, Uru Sawazuki wrote in that diary, and at the end they said he found someone who was important to him or something. He found someone. I, I'm not entirely sure. I, what are you talking about? I don't know. I'm, maybe this is on my mind. I'm just thinking really too much. Okay, let's get on with this like, uh, story, okay? I'm going to finish this in this one recording session, hopefully. I got two and a half hours. Let's get started. Marble and fortune telling? Going to marble? Why? Hmm, not entirely sure. Wait, what? What happened to my, my cursor? February 15th, last Mizuki chapter 5 M1. Oh, something weird's going on with my cursor. Oh, you came. Good. Who am I? What what is this? Why do I feel like I'm not Mizuki? Want something to drink? With water? On the rocks? You don't have to be shy. It's on me. Okay. It's such a bizarre case, the HB serial killings. That being said, the facts are fairly straightforward. Pointing out a culprit can't be too hard. Do you already know? Terror. Who are they, really? I have no clue. Who is Terror? Okay, hold on. Let me like check the comp. I don't think it's any comedy. I can't do anything. Who is this? Can I see my thing? It's no AI room or anything. Am I going to go to a mindfuck or something? Who am I? Okay, who is Terror? Jin Froway. Uru Samuzuki, Tokiko Shigure, Mama. Well, we learned that Jin Furore was the one that Tokyo wanted to save, while Uru Samuzuki was someone they kidnapped. But Uru isn't actually terror, is it? It's Jin Furore, right? Why would it be Jin? Because he, we saw him in Terror's body, right? He was the first victim. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. No, 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 no. That's not Jin Furoe. That's Uru Somizuki. What? That's incorrect? Okay, uh, Uru Somizuki? Right. Uru. But he's dead, though. We know he killed at least three people. I don't know what's going on anymore. Jin Furoe. Chikara Horidori. Andy's Komeiji. But why did he kill them? I don't know. To reach Moksha, I suppose. What was his goal? I didn't... Did I have the whole thing wrong? Because I could have sworn that, like, Uru Somosuki is dead. He was the first victim. Right? I don't know. Ah, oh, God. Already I'm confused. Why did Terror kill them? For the Nirvana Initiative to get revenge... For personal enjoyment to build schools in Africa. <laughs> uh, for the Nirvana Initiative, right? That's right. The Nirvana Initiative. The loony plan to have humans reach Moksha. That's why Uru killed the three of them. But not Komeji, right? We can put aside the little details for now. Mama, how do you know all this? The most concerning aspect of the whole thing is the time difference. Ah, uh, finally, we're gonna explain this. The left and right sides of the victims were found six years apart. 
Yeah. Regarding the first victim, the facts are already in. Six years ago, on February 10th, Jin Furaway's body fell from the ceiling of Divita. And this year, five days ago, also on the 10th, Uru Somizuki's left half was found at the stadium, not Jin's. Well, technically... Uh... Oh, that's right. I can't... I can't forget. The, 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 those two bodies were different people, right? So... Jin's was at... at Jin's right half was at the studio divider. Uru's left half was at, like, the stadium, so... Hmm... Plastic surgery and complete organ transplants. It fooled the investigators into thinking they were the same person. But what about the other victims? Yeah, I don't know. Chikara, Komeji, Tokiko. How do you explain those three? You have good intuition. You might already know. Because Tokiko made miracles happen. Professor Brown created a time machine. The timeline was not in the correct order. Ryuki and Mizuki were hallucinating. No, that's not possible that they were hallucinating because everyone else saw it. Because Tokiko made miracles happen? Tokiko was talking about the fact that like she wanted to resurrect herself, right? So I don't think it's that. Professor Brown created a time machine. Uh, I, don't, I don't know who Professor Brown is. That's probably an intentional like wrong answer. Hmm. I guess the timeline was not in the correct order? What? In other words, it's not like that. What? It's like this. Excuse me? Excuse me? What? What? What's going on? Is the timeline that you actually experienced? What? Wait, so. Uh, I am just so beyond confused right now. The red and blue lines are intertwined, almost like DNA. But how does this explain the other routes? You started on the red line from the top, and then followed the blue line, which led you to this point. You've traversed four exits. What? Like, wait, so how does this explain what exactly? That, like, did they die at the same time in these routes? That, so, I'm just so confused right now. So, does that mean that one half in one of the routes died before the other half in the other routes? Like, I'm not following, to be honest. I don't understand. Like, so, did, wait, is this a deja vu moment that I was talking about? Is it? Let me think about this. Like, the best thing I can, like, gather from this, like, photo alone is that, like, at the rooftop Misaten, uh, of the department store, like, where we went there with the masked woman, we saw Ryuki there, who was staring up at the Ferris wheel. And at the same time, we, like, we basically... I don't get it! Like, so, should this not matter then? Because... We're still on the pathways. They just died at different points, right? But the points, I... Ugh. Please make sense of this. I don't, I don't know. The left side is six years ago, and the right side is this year. What, so, Yuki, we were moving in between time itself or something? To make things easier, we'll call the left side past, and the right side present. In other words, you came here. Jumping back and forth between past and present, a day at a time, all to end up here. What? That makes no sense, though. Like, we, we were Mizuki and Ryuki. We were living in the. Now, do you understand? No, I don't. Chikara's right half was found the night of the eleventh in the past. Okay. His left half was found the next morning. Okay, in the... In the present, right? Komeiji's right half was found on the 13th. 
His left half was found the next morning at 6 a.m. What? Six years have passed, and now we're here. In the present, Tokiko's right half was found on February 12th. This is the present? But uh, I'm so lost, guys. I This makes no sense at all. The next day, a little past midnight, her left half was found in the basement of Horidori Institute. Are you telling me that both Ryuki and Mizuki's like investigations were one and the same? They were all happening at the same time? I don't understand. Long story short, the left and right halves weren't found six years apart. They were all found soon after each other. No. What? But how did... No, 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 no. This is... They did say that there was a Mizuki that, like, looked young. And then there, there's the masked woman who looked like Mizuki young. So, was it the case that, like... Wait, I was mission. Did... But in this case... That would mean that Ryuki never ran into Mizuki who had Aiba in this entire in this entire span of his investigation of his side. Nothing supernatural here. <laughs> Can I see the full chart, please? Can I just see the new version, please? Just give it to me. I want to figure this out. Just update it, please. No, you're not updating it for some reason. So, so when did this start? So. We started here, and then we went into... Oh, fucking god, I just don't understand. Okay, so this was on the right side, so let me see. If it was right, then this would be the left side. Right? We're in the right side of this one, so... This happened before the events on the left side, and then it went over here. In which case, Mitsuki stuff is happening before... Uh, before Ryuki stuff, and then it crisscrossed into here, where everything in Ryuki's perspective happened before Mizuki's, and then it crisscrossed into here, in which case Ryuki stuff happened after Mizuki stuff, I guess, and then we turned to normal here, I suppose. I'm just not getting it, to be honest. I just don't get it. I feel like... You gotta... Writers, you've gotta be careful here. Because I feel like if I get too confused at this, I might not like this. And you didn't explain anything else. Great. I just... This is a chart that shows the flow of the story in chronological order. The true flowchart can be checked from the menu, flowchart. Like, this was six years ago, present. This is the present, this is the present. This is six years ago, present. But then, it crisscrossed. What? I... I... Don't understand though. We were these things were happening at the same time. <sighs> so they're trying to explain to me that all this time everything was happening at the same time. In the same time frame. But what about what happened in the cathedral and Dante's disappearance? It was six years ago. Everyone was under the assumption that time moved forward. And that six years passed after the events of the cathedral. So, hold on, let me, like, trick get this straight. We start here. This is- everything happened at the same time, I suppose. Even, like, Mizuki's sinking process at the Riki Somni world. And I guess this is all happening at the same time. These two events, where they talk with each other. And then Ryuki explained what happened. All of this happened. This is six years ago. This is the present. I suppose. But that- wait, did that mean- after Ryuki talked with Tokiko, Mizuki went looking for the balloons, I guess? And then Jakara's left side appeared, actually? And then she synced with Gen, and then she went to Horidori Institute. In the meantime, 
Ryuki was talking with the box dude. He synced with him. Wait a minute. Mizuki was at, like, Horidori Institute. And we found the like, Komeji at Horidori Institute, though. Why is that? That's interesting. That was, like, the closest Ryuki has been to Mizuki for following this right. Then... He synced with Komeji. Afterwards, Komeji dies. And then Ryuki went to the Ferris wheel to wait for Shoma. Afterwards, Komeji's body was discovered later by Mizuki. Then we, you know, went to Terror's base. And then we synced with, like, you know, Terror at the chemical plant. Afterwards, I suppose Ryuki went to So Sejima's place to, like, you know, help Iris. And then he synced with her. And then he went to the cathedral. I guess. Now for the other side. Let's figure this shit out, because my god. So, in the meantime, while Ryuki was doing all of that, Mizuki went to Horidori Institute. She synced with Kizuna. She found out the truth of her, you know, herself. Afterwards, Ryuki went to talk with Tokiko. He synced with Tokiko. He then who was this person again? I kind of forgot. I think I think uh, I think he went to like uh, Gen's place for to talk with the mame. And then after that, Mizuki went to Kimi Shrine to fight Nice. And that was the time when she discovered Tokiko's corpse, I suppose, which is interesting. I just don't understand what's going on here. Wait a minute, Tokiko's. Oh wait, so. Died in specific times, but they're so close to each other, it looks like. Okay, I, I, okay, I get it, but let me just keep going. Uh, Zuki did that. She synced with the masked woman. She went to Misaten rooftop. After that, the Ferris wheel. That's the most confusing thing to me, to be honest. So was Ryuki actually waiting? Wait. When Ryuki was standing there, was he actually standing there because of this? That he was waiting? For the Ferris wheel to go down, and then all of a sudden, Shoma disappeared? I... Okay. I... <sighs> okay, okay, okay. I just... <laughs> I gotta be careful. So, he synced with Awame. Then he found out that, you know, about the Nirvana Initiative. What's gonna happen after thi this? Wait, he discovered that, like... That terror, kid. I was wondering about that too. It's like a mom, like Kizuna got kidnapped again twice. Was it actually the case of like uh, she got kidnapped only once, and that is when the two routes intersected with each other? I think I don't know. I don't know anymore. It's like so, he discovered Kizuna was taken to the execution chamber. The same thing here too. He found out where the execution chamber is. I guess like from terror. After you threaten him, and then, like, he just fucking... I just fucking don't know. I'm just not understanding this at all. I just don't understand it. It's just... This just makes no freaking sense. But I do notice that, like, these victims are, like, appearing at different points. Like, right here on the right side. Tokiko died, and we discovered her corpse. Not soon after. So that must imply that these two routes, these two perspectives happen at the exact same time. But how does it explain the fact that, like, these characters are aware that things happened six years ago? Are they not aware? Are they... Like, okay, so let me think. I do remember there were, like, these moments when Ryuki blanked out. And I think the same might have happened with, with Mizuki as well. I think that might explain why they suddenly stopped, or... No, I, I think this happened with Ryuki, where he suddenly stopped. So... He stopped here, I think, when Chikara died. I think that's when he like went ballistic. And if that and when that happened, that was a bit. Oh wait, that might explain his blackouts. Then his blackouts must be the moments when he transitioned over to Miz Mizuki, I suppose, where Mizuki took over for the day, I suppose. So he blanked out here after seeing Chikara's corpse. That's when Mizuki took over. But then after that, I guess somehow Ryuki went back to normal, I suppose. And then after... That makes total sense now! Ryuki's blackouts! Those, those are connected to how the flowchart works. 
He blacks out after seeing, like, Shoma not being the Ferris wheel, I suppose? Yeah, and then transitioned over to Mizuki. Then after that, it's just, we went back into, you know, Ryuki again. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, okay, so, when did he discover the blue person in the, the cathedral? When? When? I gotta figure this out as well. I'm sorry, I'm taking so fucking long with this flowchart, but I'm trying to analyze every freaking thing. So he discovered the blue person after Tokiko died. Tokiko died here. We figured it out. And then... We saw the blue person in the cathedral. He ran away. That's when this day started. In the meantime, Mizuki was fighting Nice Gloss and was at like Nice and was at Hordoi Institute. So can who's the blue person in the cathedral? We still don't know. What else? What else? What else? There's something else is on my mind. I just had it. I just had it and I just lost it. Fuck. Oh yeah. The day that Date referred to. Here. This is the point. And after this, he asked Ryuki if he ran away. Here. That was to be it. That must be fucking it. Oh my god, I just, I lost my shit, man. I guess those, like, other routes don't have anything to do with this, so... Shit, man. Just shit. That has to be the reason why Ryuki blacked out so many times. Like, he did it, like, three times, I think? I think he did it, like, three times, right? Well, aside from the fact that he, like, blanked out, like, at the Studio Divider, but I guess, like, he got back into himself again. But he blacked out here once... He blacked out a second time here, and then he blacked out again. When exactly? There's gotta be another instance of this happening. No, I think he did, did twice. I think. Jesus freaking Christ. Okay, okay. I think I'm getting it a little bit. I think I'm getting it. Holy crap. Oh, what? I see some Chinese words over there. Okay, I'm trying to understand this a little bit. All right, all right. I think I'm getting it now. Holy crap. And Mama knows this. How? Anyway, that's just my genius analysis. Oh, but I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, how the fuck do you know this, Mama? There's still tons of things that can't be explained, right? Yeah, well, I, I want them to be explained, to be honest. Especially, who killed Uru and Tokiko? What? Uru and Tokiko? They were killed by someone else? Well, I had a feeling, but... Jin, Shikara, Komeiji. It was Terror, Uru, who sliced these three in half. Okay... But then Uru was killed in the present, February 10th. Yeah, I suppose. Tokiko's body was found after that. Was it Jin Froe? Did both Uru and Jin kill- went on a killing spree? Is that it? So who killed Uru and Tokiko? Well, I'm sure this mess will be cleared up soon. By Mizuki, her friend, and by you, Freya. Uh, me? So anyway, good luck with the rest of your investigation. I'll be cheering you on. What in the fuck is going on? Uh huh? Who was I just talking to? Maybe I've had a bit too much to drink. It's awfully cold tonight. What in the fuck is going on? Oh boy! Yuji Koshi! Are you okay? Do you need some sleep? Do you want to see your family? Please blink twice if you're in danger! Eowyn Garden, February 15th, Friday 310. Never raised as you lost child! Fuck, <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, about Kizzy. Are you sure she's okay? Oh, we... Oh, hold on. Wait, so we started off from Kizzy and Leon's route? Don't worry. I made sure she's fine. What, so the other routes have something to do with this story? 
I thought they were- I thought they weren't canon. Oh my god. I'm losing my shit. Kisuna went missing. Last night around 11 o'clock, Richie Chida, her father, contacted me. Oh, wait. So, in that route... Uh, no, because that was, like, Mizuki's perspective, so there's no way that, like, they stay shit, right? I, I don't fucking know. I and I started our search for Kissy. After a while, I got a call on my phone. It was from her. She told me to beat her here in Iowa. So, that makes us sisters? What? They're sisters? We're not the same age, but we're like identical twins. Yeah, whatever that means. We have almost the same genes. Yeah, that's why. This is wild. That's crazy. Too crazy! God! Yuji Koshi at it again! I'm a copy of you. Don't say it like that. So who's the real Mizuki in this case? You or Mizuki here? But I'm your clone, right? Technically, yes. All this time. Oh boy, I had a feeling. But our DNA isn't exactly the same. My genome was rearranged. Your DNA was modified on top of that. Which is why you don't have the symptoms I have. Even though she was kind of like suffering from a heart attack. Basically, you're an upgrade. The perfect version of me. Oh. Don't say it like that. Damn, this is just going crazy now. <laughs> oh my god. Uchikoshi. Uchikoshi must have like smoked some pot before writing this story. He has to have. There's no there's no other possible explanation. I will I refuse to believe he was sane making this entire game. At this point, he's like the Kojima of like Spike Chunsoft. Alright, sassy lost child. <laughs> I just, I, I don't want this game to end, but fuck me, do I want things to make sense. I was raised at Aowen 2, about February six years ago. Why were you hiding your identity? I was raised at Aowen 2? Yeah, the same as me. When I was six, you were born at Horadori Institute and sent here. I'm guessing they thought it was too difficult to raise you at the Institute. I remember the day you arrived like it was yesterday. You were still a baby. But the moment I saw you, I got this feeling. I started bawling my eyes out. The people at the facility didn't know we were related. Makes sense. They were told we were from two different places. But we are both named Mizuki, and we looked really similar. Okay, we're uh, we're both one the same. Okay, okay. So, uh, huh. so to make it easier, everyone started calling me Big Sis. They called you Mizuki. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay, so why were you hiding your identity? If I revealed myself to you, you would want to know everything. In one way or another, you'd find out. I mean, I wanted to find out everything the moment I heard your voice, to be honest. There's no way I could, like, not recognize the Mizuki voice. You can't fool me, fighters! You'd find out that your genes were spliced. That your real parents aren't Renju and Choco. I didn't want you to end up like me. I wanted you to live a normal life. As normal as possible, anyway. Yeah, that was until, like, Saito Tsushima fucked things up. That fucking asshole. Get a normal job. A normal husband. Yeah, like your baby boy. Yeah, he's not my baby boy anymore. Like, he kind of, like, you know, t uh, mentioned the fact that he wanted to have sex with me, which is... Ooh, man, that's it. that night is going to be so good, man. I'm going to, like, pop some champagne during the process, and god damn, it's going to be so good. Get married, start a family, live happily ever after. A life like that. But if I showed up, I would ruin all that. That's what I thought, at least. I see. Why didn't you tell me seven years ago in November? Seven years ago? I was already well on my way to an abnormal life at that point. What happened seven years ago? November? I... I don't know, like... I have to check the flowchart again, what it was seven years ago. It had to have been before... 
the serial killing started, right? Or I'm just <laughs> so I guess like this is a full six years ago, so I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I'm just lost. Maybe that's true. I don't know anymore. So about February six years ago. It's like I told you. I want to know who did this to me. I know that Chikara was the mastermind. I want solid proof. That's why I was investigating him and his institute. But then, out of the blue, he gets killed. That's why I started following the HB case. Okay, so what happened after I arrived at Eowyn? They took me to Horidori Institute every so often for examinations. Well... I say examinations. I mean human experiments. I don't think you remember. But they did terrible things. Oh yeah, did they also have like some bandicoots over there? No, they didn't. Damn it! They lied to me! What a ripoff! I remember getting shots with needles as big as boba straws. My time with Horadori Institute ended when I was nine and you were three. Yeah, that's where Sami and Ward occurred, right? Like, Mizuki is the person that she was trying to protect from Chikara. It shut down and we were finally free. That's about the time you were adopted by the Okiura family. But me? Well, I told you about me, right? You were blind in one eye and had a heart condition. Ah, jeez. Fuck. Right. So it was hard to find a family who would take me. Ultimately, it was Mr. Chieda, the chairman. Okay. So when you were nine, you were adopted by the Chiedas. So then, what does Boss have to do with this? I feel like Boss, you're the daughter that Boss was referring to, right? I spent the next six years there. Yeah, yeah, six years! <laughs> Up until I was 15, I lived under the same roof as Kizuna. I see. Okay, then what happened after 15? That's why she called me Big Sis. Okay. What about after that? You said something about an eccentric woman? Yeah. I was adopted by her. Boss. Do you mean... Shizue Kuranushi. Boss. Which is why my name is Mizuki Kuranushi now. Ah, I see. I had a feeling. Well, I, I just, I didn't like, really, like, intentionally think about it because I thought like uh, Kizuna was her daughter because they had the same hairstyle and the hair color. You think that sounds kind of lame, huh? Not really. I was just, I'm just a little surprised. No, it's not that. Okay, so why did Boss adopt you? Actually, I don't know what's going to advance the plot. I'm kind of worried, but why did Boss adopt you? You know how we're stronger than everybody else? Yeah, despite not being jacked as fuck! Maybe she thought I'd come in handy. So she wanted to make you work for her. I don't know if that's the truth, but that's what she told me. Okay. Boss taught me how to fight. After she adopted me, she trained me hard every day. Oh yeah, also, did you happen to, like, uh, knock down a tree and then, like, uh, punch the air, causing the clouds to part? Yes, I did. Ah, oh, yeah, you really are just like me. For real! Six years ago, when I was 18, I was hired as a top-secret member of Abyss. Boss wanted someone who she could rely on. Someone who would never betray her. Okay, so where were you during the cycle of serial killings? Oh, well, uh, I was kind of busy in a Tommy. You know, getting some ladies, you know, banging some dudes, you know, that kind of stuff. It was a really fun experience, but you should try it out. She trusted me to handle the most sensitive situations. Basically, I'm like a ninja. Well, a kunoichi. Yeah, I see. Which is why my existence at Abyss had been hidden. The only people who know are Boss, Huter, and Ryuki. Ryuki knows? But he was talking to you as if he didn't know you. Ryuki? Why? I wonder. Yeah, she did warn us about Ryuki for some reason. And she attacked him out of nowhere at the rooftop. What is going on between these two? I don't know. About February six years ago. 
I asked her about what happened back then. She told me the details of what happened on the 12th and the 14th. The 12th... Was when Jakara's left half appeared. That was when we played the balloon game, right? What about the balloons? And again, and... This whole thing with the pe pe piece of paper. What's going on? The 14th? Kameji's, you know, right half. This whole thing here. You have, if you oh, do. shoot. Sorry, I've kind of missed that. What you have seen and heard cannot be shared with anyone. I will kill her. So, he was referring to her, right? I have an abundant amount of money. Even if I were to die, the assassins I've hired would still find her. I see. That's why you didn't talk about what happened six years ago. But I think it's okay to start talking now. Uh, I'm confused. She didn't tell us things six years ago because... I'm, I'm so fucking lost, guys. I'm so fucking lost. So, she didn't tell us anything because of the assassins Terra sent after her, I suppose? Why? I don't get it! I was able to freeze all of Terra's hidden accounts. We don't need to worry about any assassins anymore. I but you don't remember anything from February six years ago, do you? I have... Ugh. I do not. My body was destroyed in the explosion at the cathedral. The Abyss communication network was also offline. So there was no backup taken. I don't know. By the way, I'm curious. Why were we given the same name? I don't know. Maybe they didn't really care about the name. But wouldn't that make it harder to tell us apart at the Institute? Ah, uh, I don't think they had any trouble. We had code names at Horidori Institute. I was Mouse, and you were Rabbit. Ah, here it is. The, the rabbit that, like, we saw in the Somnium world. And you remember what they called us at Iowan, right? No? You were Big Sis, and I was Mizuki. Yeah. Is that what I called you? No. You were still little. You couldn't talk much. You just called me Bibi. Bibi? Bibi? Yeah. Well, that's pretty- That's a cute name! Though I do prefer a sassy lost child! Yeah, yeah, fuck you, Bazooka. Just fuck you. Bibi, huh? Anyway, we've already spent enough time here. We shouldn't be wasting time like this. Good point. There's still tons we don't know about the HB case. Like, a lot! Like... <sighs> I'm trying to process it. I don't know if I can, guys. I don't know if I can. Follow me. I want to show you something. Thank God I'm gonna have a bonus, like, you know, video for this. So, I'm hoping that you guys, if you did understand this story, please explain it to me, because I am just so lost. Huh? What is it? Oh, no. It's nothing. Let's go, BB. What is it, Mizuki? Does that mean we're gonna, like, swap over to Ryuki at some point as well? I think we are. We've got to. I am just so confused. This, this is just... <sighs> Prominent World Cuisine, February 15th, 4-15. I was gonna see the person in the freezer, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, guys. <laughs> what? Oh, Dottie's still in his outfit. Um, Dottie... Oh! Yeah, I know. It's gonna take a while to explain, Mizuki. Yeah, the person in the freezer. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I know, Mizuki. Same. Just same. This is information overload. My brains are gonna flow out of my ears. Jeez, just relax. How can I fucking relax? This is the perfect time to go crazy. 
doing here? And why are Kizzy and Leon here? Oh, and most importantly... All right, everyone's okay. I know you're gonna mention me, so might want to skip over that. Who the hell is this? What? Isn't it obvious? Fucking <laughs> Dante. Da, da, he looks so weird in that. Wait, you're that stupid porno mag collecting old man. Yep, that's me, Mr. Okay. At your service. No. Yes. Why are you <laughs> dressed like that? Where is Guinea? What are you doing here? And one last thing. Where have you been the past six years? Why didn't you try to contact me? Finally, here it is! Someone acknowledges Date's existence! I'm sorry, Mizuki. So finally, all the routes are gonna converge together. That's insane. Okay, I think I kind of get it. So technically, all of them happen at the same time, which just... They're just side things for them to finally, like, smush into the story. I had a feeling they were gonna try and do this, because they haven't done that in the last game, and I figured, hey, why, why not just, like, uh, you know, smush all of the routes together into one cohesive story? Even if it'll, even if it fries my brain, I would like for them to at least try. Six years ago, Date lost his memory when the ceiling collapsed on him. Even though you should be kind of dead, but, yeah. Then he got captured by terror, but managed to escape. And he's been wandering the Earth for the past six years. Yeah, I still don't know how that's possible. Five days ago, on the 10th, he heard the news about Jin's body being found. And finally got his memory back. That's right. Ah, God, this is so wild. So I had to talk with all of them, I guess? Yeah, 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 this we're talking with all of them now. Oh god, it's gonna be a long, long recording session. I just know it. So that must mean like the side routes that Ryuki did is gonna converge as well. Does that mean that like Komechi is actually alive? I don't know. The freezer! There's a body inside! Yeah, I gotta figure this shit out. Alright then, let's talk with you guys. Uh I'm gonna go with Leon first. Why are you here? About BB, what time is it? And uh PZ, I heard you went missing. About BB. Are you okay? Are you cold? When did you find out about the corpse in the freezer? Where is the real Genny, BB? Let me just say one thing. Who is the corpse in the freezers? Why would you pretend to be Genny? Okay, let me talk with Leon first. Uh, let's see. So... I see, that's this Kizzy. Hey, uh, why are you here, uh, Leon? There's a reason I'm here with Kizzy. I got a call from my old pal Date. I asked him to unlock something for me. Are you talking about the freezer? Oh, really now? No. I got that open on the 13th. It was a different lock this time. Well, it's a lock. Anyway, that is when we met with Date and the woman he was with. The woman? Her? I was there too. Oh, is this another woman? Or just her, I don't know. Uh, what time is it? Why do you ask? No reason. It is currently 4.25 a.m. Daybreak is close. Okay, so about BB. I've known her for a long time. She's a former co-worker from back when I was doing bad stuff. Back then, I used to call her Quartz. Ah, so that's the Quartz he was referring to. That kind of like flew over my head because I was making a joke about it. <laughs> hey, don't just blurt that out. Mizuki's name comes from Crystal. The kanji for Crystal can be read as Mizuki. Crystals are the solid form of silicon dioxide, a mineral. Nerd! Most often recognized as quartz. Wait, so you were in a thieves guild, BB? Well, you're not wrong. The snow isn't letting up. Don't change the subject. Heh. <laughs> Leon. Okay, alright, alright. So, hey there, Kizzy. Uh, I heard you went missing. To admit this, but Leon and I. Yeah, we basically, uh, you know, had some good sex. Plan to elope. <laughs> what? May I ask why? Kizzy's father won't accept me. He threatened to send Leon to prison if he continued to see me. And that's when I suggested that we run off together. Okay, but how did Leon find. I guess, like, the mask woman told her. And I agreed. I guess I'll call her BB for the time being. 
so you two. Yeah, they're both on the run for love. Yeah, I wish it was safe for us, right, Bazooki? Oh yeah, safe, Dante. For once, I agree with you. Damn it! Why did they get to be happy? And I just missed that. Damn it! I keep hitting my thing. But we don't know exactly where we want to go yet. Right. We need some more time to think about it. All right. Uh, did you tell Richie? I have told him that I am safe and sound. Okay. Well, I'm glad you weren't kidnapped. Yeah, because that would have been really boring, to be honest. Like, oh man, you getting kidnapped for the umpteenth time? You were this close to being the next Princess Peach. I am so sorry that I worried you. Yeah, I'm sorry about all this, you guys. No, oh, don't worry. If anyone's going to apologize, it's gonna be Uchikoshi for frying my brain with this bullshit. So, are you okay? Are you cold? It is snowing outside. But do not worry about us. My heart is burning strong. Alright, so about BB. I suppose Big Sis has already told you everything. Big Sis and I lived in the same home for six years. Oh, yeah! Six years! <laughs> but I never thought my Big Sis was my Big Sis's Big Sis. Alright, that's that was a mouthful. Oh god, Kisuna. So confusing. Anyway, Mizuki Date. I will call you Little Big Sis from now on. <laughs> little Big Sis. And you, Mizuki Kuranushi. I will call you Big Big Sis. Still, just as confusing. Yeah, no. <laughs> alright, alright, so hey there, Date. What the fuck is up with you? Let me just say one thing. You have more insults to hurl at me for missing six years of your life? Well, Ashley, I'm so glad you're alive, Tate. Oh, uh, that, that was unexpected. I, I was actually ready for you to insult me, so... Wow, wow thanks, Mizuki. Yeah, but also, fuck you. You look so weird in that outfit. Ah, uh, there it is. No, it's not that. Maybe she just wanted to hear you say, Mizuki, you've grown so much, or something emotional like that. No, not that either. Ah, oh, right. For you, it's been six years. For me, it's different. I've been back for four days dressed like this. I've been watching you guys the whole time. So I don't really have anything sappy to say. I told you it's not that! I'm home. Welcome back. Ah. Is that what you wanted to hear? Oh, this... All right, okay. Let me try this again. Mizuki, I'm home. Welcome back, Date. But that's not what I wanted to say. Oh, really? I threw away all your porno mags. And I also deleted all your cuckoldry videos. You what? No! No! <laughs> <laughs> ah, man. This... This is a duo that I will never get tired of. I will I will never get tired of them. <laughs> They're so fucking hilarious. They're such I just love them so much. And I was actually genuinely heartwarming as well. So why were you pretending to be Genny? I know that Horidori Institute and Nice are both caught up in the HB case. Gen was created at the Institute, and he was acquaintances with Tokiko. Oh wait, does that mean that Gen's gonna die? So, by borrowing his mask, I could snoop on Tokiko and other members of Horidori Institute. But why do you still look like that here? Horidori Institute and nice people come here all the time. Oh, really? Imitating Gen makes it easier to eavesdrop on them. Oh, I see. So, why did you reveal your identity now? I'm gonna be honest. This has gotten way out of hand. I can't do this on my own. We need to work together to stop their plan. Yeah, if only we did that from the beginning of the game, you know, like, I have my own route, then you have your route, Mizuki. But damn, I, we, we got ripped off, didn't we? Yeah, we sure did, Dante. Fuck! Their plan. Yeah, the Nirvana Initiative. So first, I contacted Mizuki Kurunushi. Dante and I met six years ago. That was you? Wait, that was you? He knew how to get a hold of me. I shared everything I had, then told her to find you, Mizuki. <laughs> to help stop them? Basically. I... wait, so... We were playing as Beep. We were playing as BB on some instances? As Mizuki? I... 
I'm confused. <laughs> oh, fuck. What the fuck? Okay, who's the corpse in the freezer, Date? Let's talk about it later. Ah, oh, please, I want to know now. I know that's like, uh, Jin Throwaway, his left half, but for some reason it's here instead of on, you know, terror. Trust me, if I explain it now, it'll only confuse you. I mean, I'm confused already, Date. Come on, what's the worst that's gonna happen? What, <laughs> am I gonna be like Ryuki, where I'll just suddenly speak Chinese and just, like, you know, go batshit insane? Because I'm already going through that now. It's, it's starting. It's gonna happen. I'm gonna go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. The stupid pervert, porno maculating old man. Also, my adopted father. Look, fuck, man. I fucking hate you so much, Sate. But I'm, I'm glad you're still alive, you stupid pervert. But I fucking hate you. All right, BB. When did you find out about the corpse in the freezer? BB, where is the real Genny? I don't know. Not here. Well, hopefully he's not dead or mommy's not getting him killed by doing stupid shit. It's fine. Do you have an idea too? Not really. Hordoy Institute or something? Oh fuck. Okay, I'll ask again. That advanced the plot? Are you serious? Oh, okay, but let me go back then. Fuck me. I, 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 hate, I hate when this happens. I didn't think that would advance the plot, to be honest. Alright, let's head all the way back. I am not missing out those two pieces of dialogue. This is going to be a very long recording session, I just know it. Alright, uh, more stuff. Uh, BB. BB? But, what? Oh, nothing. I just wanted to call you by that name. Huh, okay. So when did you find out about the corpse in the freezer? Last night. Date called me out of the blue. He told me about the corpse. And how he was pretending to be Genny. Okay. And everything else he knew. All right. Okay, I'll ask again. What's the deal with the corpse? Why is it in the freezer? It's better that you see for yourself. Let me just show you. All right. Another corpse? No, not one more. In the cathedral, right? Not one at all. It's half. All right, let's see it. Nice Japan branch, February 15th, Friday, 5.55. Okay, this is, uh, let me see. This is... Uru Sumazuki's right half, right? We saw all this information in Tokyo's file and all that. So, you finished reading the file? Yeah. Now do you understand? Not really, actually. I'm still confused. Now you know whose left half is in the freezer. Oh, wait, this box thing over here. Was that there before? Jin. Jin Furaway. That's what he really looks like. And this body? Is Jin Furaway's right half. Uru Somazuki. Terror. Oh, I'm so stupid. I'm sorry. This is. I'm still confused by this. That's Uru, so Uru Somazuki. Sorry. He murdered three people six years ago Jin, Chikara, and Andy's Komeji. Okay. So who killed the other two? Who was Tokiko and it was Tokiko and who's someone else? I forgot. Tokiko and Uru. Who killed them? It's destroyed. There's a box over here, but I'm gonna see it later. Tokiko must have written this. Okay, uh, who do I talk to? The wall? The wall is partially broken. There's a hidden safe beyond it. Uru's right half. Okay, uh, should I talk with them or what? Yeah, I, I'm gonna look in there. Okay. Uh, Date. You changed. Are Leon and Kisada okay? About Jin Furaway. Uh, are Leon and Kisada okay? Leon and Kisada aren't here right now. We split up, Brahmin. They're not going far away, are they? They should be fine. 
They said they were going to think hard about where to go. Alright. You changed? That outfit was so hard to move in. With the wireframe and all the stuffing. Yeah, I know. About Jin Furoe. I don't need to explain it. You should already know. Jin Furoe, the child of Tokiko and Chikara. He was born with a rare and complicated disease. It caused inoperable tumors to grow in the right half of his body. But we don't... It, well, I see, yeah, the, the right half had the tumors. Jin might have had it worst of all. He got his first transplant when he was really young. I don't think he wanted to take organs from Uru. Remember what it said in Uru's diary? He said he wanted to apologize. I think he is referring to Jin. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, I didn't think about that, to be honest. So Jin got punched. That was Jin. He got punched. So, I see. I am sort of getting it, but it feels like we saw a little bit of an issue on the right half of, like, uh, Jin's body, right? It was Jin's right half that appeared to Suyo Devaita, like, his... No, it wasn't Jin. I don't think it was Jin. I just... I think that's Uru's own. No, 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 no. I'm losing it, I'm losing it. Okay, Uru's own Mizuki, this is half. This is his right half. So that must have been Jin's right half that we saw. And he, his tooth, his like jaw had like an issue in terms of his tooth. But we, I, I don't know. So you think the transplant was done against Jin's will? I'm not positive, but that's just the feeling I get. Did, like, Uru Sombazuki punch Jin, or did Jin punch Uru? I don't know. Baron Pervert! <laughs> Alright, baby. Where did you... When did you get here? What happened till, up till now about Uru Sombazuki? When did you get here? Only a few hours ago. Around 1am. That was been her who was, like, talking with Lian to, like, look into this place, right? I asked Lian to open the door to the staircase. No, oh, Date. So the lock you mentioned earlier. That's right. Lock to the staircase door. That's when I asked them about their plans to run away together. Then the four of us headed down the stairs. Leon carried Kizuna down. And that's when we found the corpse on the ritual platform. Okay, I am just going with the flow right now, waiting for something to make total sense. <laughs> I don't know. So how'd you find out? I used Marco's x-ray function. Oh, Marco. Marco? The name of my AI ball in my left eye. He's pretty shy. He doesn't talk much. Oh, really? Ah, oh, man, I wish I had that eyeball. Unlike someone else I know. Excuse me, are you talking about me? Mm-hmm. I know Iba really well. How? We were partners six years ago. What the fuck? So I was playing as her? In some instances, in Ryu- in <coughs> What the fuck? What the fuck? When I was hired at Abyss, I was supposed to get Marco transplanted into my left eye. But he wasn't finished yet. Oh. The masked woman must have had Aiba in her- I see- I guess, like, she had Aiba in her eye socket until Dante got her back. I guess that's what's going on here. So instead, I got Aiba. But Aiba and Dante- yeah, Iba and Date were kind of fighting at the time. Holy shit. And I needed to see if I was compatible with an AI ball at all, so... I kind of took her from his, you know, Dante's eye socket, and man, she was kind of talkative. I see. I apologize. I do not remember anything from back then. Because of the explosion, right? Yes. It's kind of sad. I made so many memories with you, Iba. Okay. Oh my god. That's... So why were Iba and Date fighting? Um. Well, you see, I, I was so preoccupied with my work. Yeah, your work! Quote unquote work, Date! No. It was because you tried watching VR porn while Iba was still in your left eye. Ah. That does sound like something that would make me very angry. I told you a million times it was just a watermelon splitting video. <laughs> uh, never changed, Dante. Never changed. So what happened until now? I wanted to ask Shoma about. I looked like Gen. 
Shit. Raise any concerns. I always do this for some reason. I always fuck this up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just... This PS4, I, I, I can't really see it because my desk. So I'm really just accidentally hitting buttons. I wanted to ask Shoma about the genetic experiments, so I visited him. Yeah, I looked like Gen, so it didn't raise any concerns. He told me a lot. About his body and his older sister. And about the hidden safe. So, at that moment, when we talked with Shoma a few episodes ago, we were actually BB? That's what we came here for. Wait, Shoma has an older sister? What the fuck? So we were switching on and off between Mizuki and BB in this Let's Play? And we didn't notice. Kizuna and Iris's friend. A mermaid at Sunfish Pocket. A mame doi. Really? So why does she not have the same box head as the box dude? I have no clue either. I've been asking that for a long time. Yeah, me too, Mizuki. That, this is some weird shit. About Uruzo Mizuki. I can't really say anything more than what's in the file. Uruzo Mizuki. He's the child that was kidnapped from Ioan when he was six. It was Chikara and Tokiko who took him. They wanted to make him Jin Furoe's donor. So for over a decade, they did surgery after surgery, giving more and more of Uru to Jin. Half of his face, too. The skin he lost was replaced by an artificial skin made of carbon chitin. Half his face was transplanted onto Jin's as well. Jesus Christ, that's gotta be so f That's gotta do a lot to your mental state. Right. And it was only half because Jin had a percent-shaped birthmark on the left side of his face. Yeah, but what about the course we saw on Gen's freezer? A holy symbol for the order of percent. It was considered sacred. And Chikara, being a devoted follower, couldn't get himself to rip that skin off. Which is why the left half of Jin's face was left untouched. And after all those transplants, Jin's body ended up being cut in half. Oh, I, I should have thought about that. Jin was killed as well, so he was put in... So that must be why his body appeared in the first place. He was killed too. Six years later, February of this year, Uru's body was cut in half. So what was discovered was... Jin's right half and Uru's left half. Jin and Uru are essentially mirror images of one another. So when the police were identifying Uru's body, they got their DNA sample to compare against from Jin's organs. And because those were originally taken from Uru, it naturally follows that they match. So that's why... That is the mistake that caused investigators to believe that they were the same person. Yep. God damn it, I didn't look at the box for fuck's sakes. I've been wondering. Oh yeah, okay. I, I need to check it now. Six years ago, why did Uru cut the bodies in half? That was for the Nirvana initiative, right? Yeah, but that whatever that is. Yeah, but what does that have to do with the plan? And speaking of, is the Nirvana initiative still happening? I mean, after all, Terror's dead. He is? I didn't think at all, like, oh my fucking god, no fucking way. Oh, oh, that's, that was what was going on in that. I, I, I don't know if I remember, like, you know, figuring this out, but the reason why Date said that he thought that Yuki ran away was because what happened at the chemical plant happened before the whole thing with Kisuna and, like, her kidnapping and, like, when we encountered her and, you know, Terror in this place. So that means, after that, Terror was killed somehow. So we don't actually know who killed Terror or Tokiko. Right. The Mastermind is dead. Was it Miyuki? Terror gave him some orders, and I don't know what those could be, but it's possible that like, we played a section of Miyuki's, like, you know, route while following Terror's orders. But you saw it. On the night of the 13th, on the rooftop of Misaton. Yeah, the rocket launcher. That 
was terror. It was definitely Uru's voice. But Uru should have been dead. Perhaps his voice was recorded. Either way, the rehearsal happened even after Terror died. Which means... The main event will likely still happen as well. Yeah, it's safe to assume it will proceed as planned. But I still don't understand the full scope of the Nirvana Initiative. When, where, how? We are completely in the dark. Why don't you ask the culprit? Yeah, good idea. Yeah, wherever he is, whoever he is. Hey, Uru, what's up with your plan, you asshole? Yeah, <laughs> Date. No, that's not what I meant. There are other culprits. Whoever killed Uru and Tokiko. You believe they might know something about the Nirvana Initiative? I don't know for sure, but they at least might have some clues. Can we talk about the box, please? We don't have enough information yet. Looks like we're gonna need some extra help. Help? Over here. Come with me. Can I just like look at the box or damn it? There's nothing over here. Oh, I was wondering about this spot over here in the you know area. It looks a little bit off. You would think that, right? But check this out. Open sesame! What? Marco, please. Ah, oh, jeez, what is going on now? Is it another passage? What is this? Do you like it? Erotic, isn't it? Oh my god, what is going on now? What are we gonna see? How is this in any way erotic? Much more erotic than watermelon splitting. I can't even focus on Dante's, like, funny jokes. I'm just... Uh... Let's get going. Y yeah. Didn't check out the box, damn it. So stupid. I didn't think... I hate the fact that I don't know what's going to advance the plot. I just hate it. Hope that it doesn't affect things. So where are we going now? Ordway Institute, I bet. I feel like these two places are connected. Am I going crash or something? Oh. What? what? This is the same place that got destroyed. What? There were two cathedrals? Oh, I see Ryuki. What does this mean? It means exactly what you see. There are two cathedrals? That's right. Mizuki, look. Uh, what are you doing here, dude? I'm here too. Uh, hey, Tama. That, about time. I've been, I've been waiting for you, Tama. Tama. How is Ryuki doing? Nah, she's doing good for Coco Boss, man. I've been trying my hardest to keep him in control, but he's starting to lose it, Dante. Terrible. It was a bad idea to show him this place. He's been like this for hours. Oh, fucking Christ. So, there were two places, there were two freaking cathedrals. I... Oh my god. I feel like I have got to just watch this, like, Let's Play twice, just to even understand what's going on, because I can't do it in this one single Let's Play. I'm just so lost. I'm still fucking lost. Hey there, Ryuki, you okay? Okay, I'll talk to him first, so he last. Hey, BB. Uh, about Ryuki. Do you hate Ryuki? Of course I do. Okay, but what'd he do? I wanna shove a pipe in his mouth and stir up his organs. Why? I don't understand, BB. Six years ago, he... Oh! That's why. So, that Mizuki was... Her. Oh, I didn't, I didn't think about it, to be honest. I, I was wondering why she, she hated him so much. It made my heart condition worse. Affected my work. I can't investigate properly if I have to go to the hospital all the time. I mean, come on, you can't really blame him. He was being threatened. But when I heard you recently joined Abyss, I shadowed you. 
on February 10th when you went to the stadium? Yeah, I tried to like, shoot you and all that. that. No hard feelings, right, Mizuki? Fuck you, BB. Just fuck you. I got there before you and found the corpse. At the time, I had no clue it was Uru's left half. But I knew it had to do with the HB case from six years ago. I told you before that the one thing I wanted was for you to live a normal life. I couldn't let you get caught up in this case. I had to stop you. That's why... Yeah, you tried to kill her. Well, technically, you didn't. You weren't trying to kill her. But, the, but yeah. I see. You shot at Mizuki to dissuade her from finding the corpse. If anything, you actually did the opposite. You, you made her really want to try and figure this all out. She seems a little pissed. <laughs> oh God, I've got a fucking. I gotta like uh rewatch my entire let's play now just to figure out which parts of Mizuki's route we were actually playing as BB. Oh my god. Hey Date. Two cathedrals? Marco, can you send Iba the data? Oh I keep forgetting that Marco is Eyeball's name. Can I see him please? Or yeah, he's it's he, right? Got it. Opening it. It is a cross section of the two cathedrals. Ah, I see, so. It's under Nice and Gloss's building, and the one we went to as Ryuki was the east, here. Seems like there's like another passageway here, that I remember the blue person going up a ladder and then across a bridge and escaping through that little place. You get it now? There's one on the east and one on the west. Terror blew up the west one. This one, right here. Oh, we're in the west? Ah, yes, yeah, so, so I'm guessing like Ryuki... Yeah, okay, okay, I get it now. So, in Ryuki's perspective, we assumed that they were one in the same place, but there's actually two. Okay, I get it now. Which happens to be the same side Ryuki met Terror. What he called his execution chamber. On the east side was Uru's corpse and Tokiko's file. And that mysterious box. That I haven't checked, unfortunately. The one connected to the Nice building is the east one. You can take the elevator up to the president's office. Alright, so what two cathedrals? Huh. Beats me. Maybe it has something to do with what Nice believes. What two halves of a whole, I suppose? Two and one? I think they were obsessed with that. Alright, Jesus Christ. Stupid shameless man! <laughs> I like how Mizuki just like cats with like uh insulting him in his thoughts. Hey there, Ryuki, are you okay? It's Ryuki. He's going cookie for Cocoa Puffs. You okay, Ryuki? You don't look okay. He appears to at least be breathing. He might not be if there was rope and a branch in here. This has been eating at Ryuki for the past six years. He regretted what he did and blamed himself. He betrayed Date and shot Mizuki Kuranushi with stun bullets. Like, but then why did... <sighs> Oh, wait, I'm just getting it now, so... We've been switching in between Mizuki and Ryuki this entire time. I, yeah, yeah, I, I understand that part now. Fucking fuck! <sighs> so at some point, we didn't know that Ryuki ran away because we didn't play as him when he did run away. Holy crap. And what happened to Mizuki, Date, and Kizuna on top of that? Yeah, Terror detonated the bomb, but it was Ryuki who told Date about this place. If he never did, Kizuna and Mizuki wouldn't have been hurt. That's what's been plaguing him. He started drinking, which made the whole thing worse. I don't care if he feels bad about it. I still don't forgive him. Hey, calm down, baby. I, I, I get that you're mad, but come on. He was, he was being threatened. You saw it yourself, right? Easy. He had his reasons. The course is implemented in a self-discovery program. If I activate it, she will be lost forever. I wonder why Terra didn't activate it when we encountered him as Ryuki, like six years ago. That did happen six years ago, right? Yeah, it did. So, uh, about Kizuna. She eloped, huh? Yeah, she's getting giggity with a buff simp, huh? I didn't think at all that Leah would be having him, but man, you learn something new about someone every day. Have nothing to 
do with the video. It was just Ryuki's active imagination. What? What video? It had nothing to do with the video? What? Active imagination? I don't get it. I, I don't get it. So, why are you here, Ryuki? Date called me. Yeah. I told him to head over to the other cathedral. Does that mean he saw Uru's corpse in Tokiko's file? He did. Yep. And then he came here through the hidden passage. Alright, so what about the self-destruct program in Tama? I was overhauled completely during maintenance a few years back, and that function was deleted. That's when Ryuki opened up about what happened. Why didn't you share this earlier? I couldn't. Ryuki betrayed Abyss. He did something you can't come back from. I couldn't let anyone find out. Which was what? Ah, oh, I see. So he attacked Mizuki. That's right. So you protected him. It's the same reason I didn't upload the investigation data from six years ago. I made an oath. No matter what, I'll... I will protect Ryuki. But Ryuki himself could have informed us sooner. But if he did, Terra would blow up uh, Tama, right? But Terra's dead now, so what is keeping him from telling us? You should know why he didn't do that. Why he gave in to Terra's demands. He wanted to protect his loved ones. Yeah, but Terra's dead now! Wouldn't you do the same? Unless Terra's somehow alive. I don't get it. Ryuki, you made a mistake. But lying around here in all your misery isn't going to fix anything. If you really regret what you did, solve this case. That's the only way to atone. Shouldn't, like, Date's words be, like, waking him up now? Ryuki, I remember one night we went out drinking. You told me about your little brother. You always talk about him when you drink. You made him a promise, right? You said... I'll become a hero of justice. If I've fallen, I just need to get back up again. You used to say it all the time. It doesn't matter how many times you fall. As long as you have a body to do it, you climb back up again. Come on, Ryuki. Climb above the debris. It doesn't matter if you're pitiful. It doesn't matter if you show vulnerability. You struggle, you crawl, and you make it back to the top. That's what we do. That's what makes us human. Mr. Date. Everyone. <laughs> What's that in his hand? Ryuki, now's not the time to cry. Come climb up here. You mean... Don't get me wrong. I'll only forgive you after we solve this case. So... After that, we all shared information. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just... That was a really... Oh, I I feel bad for Ryuki, man. He he really was trying his best. And oh my god, like, baby is so tiny. Aiba, Tama, and Marco shared everything on the local network. Dante received everything as well via the device, planted in his eye socket. Anything that wasn't recorded electronically, we shared verbally. Everything from six years ago... Everything from this year, all the information, including Somnia, and top to bottom. So, first thing on the agenda is stopping the Nirvana Initiative. When, where, how? We don't know anything about it. Hmm? We should know everything except where. Tama shared all her data, right? 
I did receive the information. I didn't give it a close look. Ryuki, can you tell us more about the Nirvana Initiative? To be honest, I don't really know myself. I'm just confused as all of you, to be honest. Yeah, I'll explain everything in order. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to just be more confused. First, Terror, Uru, created a video. Alright. The uh, QR video, right? That we found on... I don't even know. The first body. I'll just say that. Um. Why are you talking to me? I don't know. I just want to talk to everyone. Come on. It's Ryuki's turn, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know. He, it's his time to shine, I suppose. Um. Don't worry about me. You should talk to Ryuki. Alright. She's got no Ryuki. Hopefully. The guy whose little head does all the thinking. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay. Hey, Ryuki. It's Ryuki. Okay, so about the videos. What are, what are about those? We, I've been so confused for the past 30 episodes. Please explain to me, Ryuki. Uru created three videos. QR video, Nirvana trial, and Nirvana X. Yeah. The QR video was the first. The QR code on the signboard in Jin's body. That was a link to the video, right? Right. So it was first made public six years ago, on February 10th. The motive was... Very small part of my plan. It's the prototype. There were stories about people who went missing after watching the video, but... But Terra denied it. You know, I'm starting to think that maybe Uru, in one instance, was Terror, but then died, and then Terror became someone else. So, I think the, the Terror that denied it was maybe someone else? Not Uru? It was actually the second video that caused people to go missing. Oh. The Nirvana trial. Okay. So about the Nirvana trial. It was uploaded on February 9th. Back when Uru was still alive. But what for? I think it was a beta version of Nirvana X, the third video. For testing purposes for the main event. Testing what? That was the one we saw before Tokyo died, right? I think I think I remember it. There was a code like Bats 490 in the Nirvana trial video. That code led to the Eastern Cathedral. The coordinates led to the staircase. In that one, I guess like Shoma decoded, right? Yeah, but that door has tons of locks. Right, but the staircase had another code. By solving that, you could collect the numerous keys located all over the city. Oh. And those who did solve everything would be able to unlock the door to the Eastern Cathedral. Unless you were like Leon, in which case, he had hack powers. Did you notice the box? Yeah, but I didn't look at it, unfortunately. Inside was a device that shot TC Purge. Oh, really? If you open the box, it triggers. Oh. So that's what that thing was. So that means the blue person was just a hallucination then. I see. So about TC Purge. When it enters the brain, it can even overwrite the DNA structure inside neurons. It can make you see things, make you dance. It makes you do weird things over and over. And it spreads in the air. If this virus gets out somehow, the human race is in for a rough trip. Can you picture it? The whole world going crazy. People everywhere doing unpredictable things. Crazy things. Over and over. Wait, does that mean that like Ryuki only got the TC purge after opening that box? So then what about those moments when he went crazy before then? Where he just like spoke Chinese and just went ballistic? What about that? I'll be honest. I contracted TC Perch. Because I opened the box. But it's okay. Ryuki has developed a resistance to it. And he can't spread it either. I suppose. It said that, TC Purge is still a problem. Before the body develops a resistance, it can spread. Not to mention the neurons that are damaged can't be repaired. That's why Ryuki was acting weird. 
Is that what it looked like? Yeah, and you also like spoken Chinese for whatever reason. Were you actually good at that, Miyuki? No, I never learned Chinese once in my life. Glad to know it was just the TC Perch. I was very glad. I thought I was actually crazy. When I was infected with TC Perch, my symptoms got worse. Oh, I see. So you had other problems then. Disorientation, short-term memory loss, hallucinations. He's been seeing hallucinations for six years now. The mental trauma of what happened to his brother. Hmm, I wonder if his brother is actually gonna, you know, be important in this. I feel like he is. I feel like his brother is actually terror now. I suppose. I, I don't know. That's a long shot, but maybe. Anyway, those who solved the code and opened the box contracted TC Purge. Oh, does that mean like Shoma had it too? And as a result, they started acting strangely. And now there are people dancing and rioting in the streets, and a lot of suicides. Despite the fact that this is not like you know a nationwide issue, and like we we'll, we should have like more people on this case than just the, the four of us, but hey, Kyo, we gotta do the budget, okay, guys? Okay. I see. These people would have no motivation to return home. That's why so many people went missing. In other words, Uru's experiments were a success. He's dead now, but his plan is still alive. I'm guessing his lackeys are carrying out the plan now. To raise the curtain on the main event. Alright, so who is Terror? The main event. Has he kept up these two? No? Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Uh... Yeah, okay. So, about the main event. I think I know what they're gonna do. They're gonna shoot the rocket somewhere. With TC Purge on the warhead. The rocket will explode. And the virus will spread? Yeah. Most likely, yes. Tons of people will get infected with TC Purge. It will grow in their bodies. And inevitably spread. From one person to another. If we do things that are beyond the comprehension of a designer, simultaneously, all around the world, bugs will start appearing everywhere. This will lead all mankind to reach Moksha, an emancipation from this fictional world. That is the Nirvana Initiative. Oh, that explains why Tokiko was l alive in that instance. That was six years ago before she died, isn't it? I suppose. Um... Even if this Nirvana thing turns out to be bullshit, the virus itself is a problem. Right. I don't know if it will really cause glitches to appear or anything, but it'll be mass hysteria. There is already an uptick in suicides. Ah, oh, jeez, this is getting wild now. So when is the plan going to happen? The final video, Nirvana X, is already public. There's a seven-digit number, which is probably a time and a date. Yeah, that. February 15th, 12 o'clock. Noon, today. Iva, what time is it now? 7.55 a.m. Alright, so we got like four hours. We barely have four hours left. So where is it going to happen? Well... We don't know. My guess is the other letters that were in the video are some kind of code too. Maybe they point to a location. C at CCF GGD A E I G A H E I don't know what that means. No. I converted the letters to numbers and checked the coordinates. It's an area in the Pacific Ocean. No land around. I don't think those coordinates are where the plan is happening. Then where could it be? Oh, I remember something Bibi said earlier. The culprit who killed Uru and Tokiko. Maybe they have a clue. But who is it? Right. Well, in that case... There is... One person. Oh, here it is. Maybe the blue person wasn't the hallucination after all. I don't know if they're the culprit, but they might have some valuable information. I didn't know where to find them before, but I've got a good idea now. That person. Oh God, who is it? 
She's... She? Probably with Shomar. Amame? Oh, that's right, her Somnium world. Yeah, she she seemed to know something about the uh, Nirvana Initiative. About time, we're finally going to figure out what's going on in her mind.